This is the story of a man and a ship. Millions of people across the world have, for the past hundred years, been convinced that they know the story of the Titanic. On its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York, it hit an iceberg and sank with horrific loss of life. However, if you were to ask how a magnificent liner, built regardless of expense and owned by a prestigious British shipping company, could come to such a catastrophic end, comparatively few will be able to answer. My great-uncle, Charles Herbert Lightoller, was the most senior surviving officer of the tragedy. As the second officer on the doomed liner, after the sinking he found himself thrust into the spotlight of two official inquiries, one in the US and one in Britain. At neither of these did he acquit himself well. Yet neither he nor any of the senior officers who were lost were in any way censured for what had befallen the ship that many considered unsinkable. Although as a young boy I met Commander Lightoller on several occasions, I recall no talk amongst the family of the Titanic or of my great-uncle's involvement in the sinking. Perhaps everyone felt that he should be allowed to forget the terrible event. But how could he forget such a traumatic experience? The world certainly didn't want to forget it either. Countless books, films and television programmes have endlessly regurgitated the events of that dreadful night. When I was approached to write a book about the great ship and the great man, I felt somewhat overawed by the seemingly inexhaustible wealth of material already covering the subject. Except that most of this coverage concerned the planning, building, launching and sinking of the ship and not that much had anything to do with Second Officer Lightoller. Of course, there was my great-uncle's autobiography, Titanic and Other Ships, which seemed to be mainly a catalogue of those other ships, and also contained one or more glaring inaccuracies. Also, Patrick Stenson had written Lights, the Odyssey of C.H. Lightoller, a fascinating account of my great-uncle's adventurous life, but on the whole, writers and researchers seem focused on the actual sinking rather than how Lightoller managed to survive the disaster when other senior officers did not. Also, very few comment on his extraordinary behaviour at the official investigations immediately after the disaster. As I began my search for anything that would reveal more about my great-uncle and his life before during and after the loss of the great ship, childhood memories began to emerge from the dim recesses of my mind. There were fragments of conversations with my maternal grandmother, Lightoller's sister, my mother and her father, a man overshadowed by scandal and secrecy, but with a revealing link to one of the Titanic's lasting mysteries. One of the difficulties facing any serious student of the Titanic tragedy is not only the mass of information available, but within it the vast amount of conflicting testimony from survivors amplified and embellished down the generations. Add to these the exaggerated and often inaccurate reports in the contemporary press, and I trust that readers of this book will appreciate the daunting task that faced me of sifting the truth from the merely fanciful. There can be no doubt that Charles Herbert Lightoller was an extraordinary man. He was tough, he was brave, and he appeared to take storm, shipwreck and official inquiries in his stride. However, in seeking to answer some of the unanswered questions about the Titanic and her loss, I found myself uncovering family secrets and scandals that both directly and indirectly influenced my opinion about the most famous of all maritime losses. I must hasten to point out that any conclusions I appear to reach about my great-uncle's conduct during and after the sinking 
together with ideas formed regarding the behaviour of the owners and officials of the Titanic, are based solely on my personal researches, together with memories recalled from childhood. Great Uncle Bertie, as I came to call him through my grandmother Gertrude's influence, is as fascinating a character as any well-drawn hero brought to life by great writers of fiction. He was heroic, and yet, when the occasion required it, he may well have been a liar. Truth is sometimes much stranger than fiction, and the short life of the ship called Titanic, and, to a great extent, Great Uncle Bertie's adventures on sea and on land, are a living proof of this. Second Officer Lightoller always maintained that his survival in the Titanic sinking, when some 1,500 other souls perished, was directly attributable to his faith in a higher power, a belief he had arrived at through his conversion to the tenets of Christian science. It is certainly an interesting footnote to the tragic sinking on April the 15th, 1912, that Great Uncle Bertie went on to further exciting adventures in both the First and Second World War. These included sinking a German U-boat, shooting a Zeppelin airship, acting as a spy, and rescuing over a hundred soldiers pinned down by enemy fire on the beaches of Dunkirk. What a man! And what of the other key players in the Titanic drama? Well, J. Bruce Ismay considered by many to be the driving force behind all that was wrong with the Titanic, as well as being, to my mind, Great Uncle Bertie's nemesis, completely disappeared from the scene, a broken man. While the fabulously wealthy J. Pierpont Morgan, the ultimate owner of the White Star Line, under whose flag the Titanic sailed, died the year following the sinking. So I think we could safely say that despite the very real possibility of Lightoller having been encouraged to perjure himself at some point, the man was a survivor in every sense of the word. There can probably never be final closure to the story of the Titanic and the strange case of Great Uncle Bertie. Too much time has elapsed and too many stories, myths and theories have been created over the past hundred years. This book is merely my attempt to provide a fair and balanced account of events as I perceive them. It is also the story of a remarkable member of my family, of whom Grandma Gertrude so aptly remarked, Most people thought my brother was a hero. Well, in a way he was. But after all, we're all human. <laughs>